How's it going, guys? So I finally got some time to film. Wedding's over. Everything went without a hitch. Well, somebody did get hitched anyways. Our system is working really good. 8,000 watts, still working good. Got the transformer running. Uh, we're doing all right. But we're swapping this puppy out for the new model, the upgraded model. This one's been very reliable so far, just because uh, they dialed back its performance a little bit uh, to increase reliability. So uh, it might not do the full 8,000 watts anymore like it used to, but it, instead of uh, blowing on oversurging, it now throttles back and lets you know by uh, flashing a little bit on the output when you're running too much. And it tells you, hey, Shut, shut what you're running off or whatnot, but uh, still runs my 240 well pump. Everything else in my house, as long as I'm not running, say, the oven, everything in the house plus the well pump. When the well pump kicks in on top of the oven, that's where the struggles. It gives that warning, and then you either shut something off immediately or cycle the inverter or shut the inverter off. Um, but if you're not like me, everything in my house is electric. My oven. Uh, my dryer, my well pump, everything takes a ridiculous amount of power. This would run most houses, um, but without saying too much more, I'm going to show you the new inverter. Here's the new 8000 watt that I'm going to be testing. I opened it up for a quick second. I should have taken my camera out. It's got four larger transformers. They're about about twice the size as the ones that are in here. This has nine smaller transformers. This has four larger, four double the size transformers. And the MOSFETs and stuff, I could not really see much of. I could see a little bit of the input stage. It looks like they're using uh, the same large MOSFETs. But I couldn't, I can just tell by looking at them, uh, kind of, that they look similar. I could not see any model numbers because everything is under this massive heat sink. This one here. I don't know if you can see much of it. From here to here, it is super heavy. This thing is huge and heavy. And this is aluminum, and it's adding so much weight because the heat sink runs front to back, side to side. It The heat sink is the size of this inverter. It is huge. I just cannot believe how big this heat sink is. Like, you can see the heat sink over here. It is massive. It's massive on this side. It's the whole size of the inverter. Everything is connected to this one heat sink. There's only one now, one t uh, temperature sensor. So they really stepped up their game on the heat sink. It's insane, actually. I'll try and focus in here. See if you can see that. It's extremely thick aluminum. Like the base is, I'd say, half inch thick, not quarter inch. I'd say a full half inch thick of aluminum, solid aluminum, which is insane. That's very expensive. So that's very interesting. So it's got, it probably has like a really big thermal uh, bank for keeping cold for huge surges. And then after that, it relies on the cooling of the inverter itself. So it'll be interesting to see what it can run. Anyways, I'm hooking this sucker up right now. I'm going to pull this guy down we'll put the new guy up the new guy is quite a bit taller and quite a bit narrower so here we go and there's the two inverters here you can see the size difference there's my hand and then we'll do the size difference on the side here so there's my hand go as tight as I can as tight as I can as you can see, so it's quite a bit taller, a little bit longer, a lot narrower for sure. So, yes, this is the old outgoing model. They've put quite, quite good discounts, a couple of hundred bucks off these ones now. So, uh, they're pretty good. Um, they have tweaked them, so that's a good thing. Now the new model, hopefully this thing is just going to be a beast. Can't wait to try it. Here we go. All right. So got everything hooked up. Focus. There we go. Got 
got the Pierce Iron Wave inverter hooked up. I like the cover on these new ones a lot better than that plastic insert. It's kind of nice. Four outlets. They're all wired in parallel. So really, you can't really pull more than, between all four, you can't pull more than about, say, 2,500 watts at the most. If you start pulling 1,500, 1,500, well, it's going to desolder on the first one. But that's what, not what they're meant for. If anything more than about 2,000 watts, you got to pull from the hard wire. And we are hooked up. 128 volts. I, I asked them to put the voltage on the higher side on 120 volts. And uh, some things like it a lot more, some things like it a lot less. But uh, in total, it will put out a little bit more watts at that voltage. So I, I don't know what this can put out yet. I have not tested anything other than what we are running right now. And I don't know what we're running right now. So let's go take a look. See how many watts we are taking. And we are taking, let's see here. We're taking 600 watts on the DC side. And I already did a test. Sorry, they're doing dishes inside. I already did a test. The no low draw on this inverter is super low. So if this can do 8,000 watts, awesome. It's only 35 watts. 35 watts at whatever voltage right now. 62 volts. It's awesome. That is really, really good. So uh, I believe this is the lowest watt inverter I think I've ever used here. The old model is closer to that. I think that was like 38 to 40 watts. This one's 35 watts. This one may have been a little bit more, maybe 43 watts, um, brand new. With my repaired board, it's a little bit higher. Oh, but that was that's just the inverter. That's not with the transformer. This pretty much doubles it. So if this is uh, 35 watts with this and the transformer, because I want 240 and 110, or 120 and 240, I use this, which pretty much doubles it. So I'm taking about 70 watts for the two, approximately. Uh, this inverter has no hum almost at all. Like even if you put your ear to the thing, you can't hear anything. Um, you can hear the hum through the transformer like crazy. My repaired input board on this hummed quite a bit. Uh, it could have been just a loose transformer. I don't know what it was. The magnet signs hum quite a bit. They have a large transformer, so it makes sense. So, now it's uh, time to start testing this thing. I'm going to test it slowly. Uh, I want to first make sure the fans turn on and all that good stuff. I'm sure they will. This is their newer model. This is much more money uh, than the previous model. I believe this is about $1,500 Canadian. Uh, I don't know what that is, American, around 1000 bucks uh, American, around there. But we'll see. Let's see depth, how deep it is in comparison to the old one. <coughs> this one's only got two fans, two larger fans versus four smaller fans. I like that better. Less chance of one going. Uh, also, though, one and one does go. It's 50% of your cooling instead of 25%. But anyways, we're going to run this for a bit and run some loads. One thing I immediately noticed about this 8,000 watt inverter versus the Magna signs, this was the same thing with the outgoing uh, reliable inverter, is they don't fluctuate in voltage when you turn loads on. Like there's, when I turn that heater on, the lights don't dim for a second and come back up. It's one thing I do fault the Magna signs for, is they do fluctuate in voltage quite a bit when stuff turns on and off. Also, uh, anybody thinking about going this high a voltage with magna signs, I run up to 66 volts. Uh, at 66 volts, the lights do flicker. It's giving you the over voltage flicker. Uh, same thing that the reliables will do if you over volt them. This is custom 60 volt inverter, so it will not do that. Where these are technically a 48 volt system that I'm using on a 60 volt system. So they, they give you the old over voltage warning flicker. Uh, even up to, they'll flicker up to around even this voltage. They're not, they weren't flickering, but they they have, I've seen them flicker at around 62 volts before. It, it just depends, it's around there somewhere. Um, as you can see, we are on 
reliable. Magnus hands off, completely off. This thing would focus. I'm filling with my cell phone, it's not the greatest. Uh, I should actually shut the main science rate off. We do not need them. So this is going to go to sleep. Because this takes about 12 watts by itself. Just to run this and to keep everything uh, up and running. So we're going to shut that off. We are just running off the new reliable 8000 watt and this 10,000 watt transformer. I got this... I got this... Uh, a uh, fan on the side here to help keep it cool because this thing does get quite warm when you start putting a, a large load on it yeah it's rumbling a little bit when I put the fan against it so so anyways let's have it on cheap 12 volt power supply anyways I'll update you guys when I uh, put some loads on it now it's been about an hour this has been running there's about 1070 watts load on this inverter and I just noticed something very strange on this inverter. Like, it's not, doesn't feel warm. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of warmth coming out of the top. But there is like a little bit of a draft. And I'm wondering if that's just the warmer air coming out the top. It's interesting because I had to check to make sure the fans weren't running really low, which they are not. So I was just, it was very interesting to feel that. Like, it feels like there's some uh, like a fan running really really low or something but I I believe these are the only two fans I don't think there's anything else in here I opened it up and I didn't see anything so I'm wondering if that's just because it's just one heat sink running all the way up but like I said it's also not warm so it's very interesting the room is cooler today so that could be why uh, the transformer itself is actually fairly cool just because I have the fan blowing through it. We are now sitting at 61.7 volts. Thanks for watching. Okay, so it's the next day. This inverter has been running, uh, I don't know, over 12 hours now. Everything looks good so far. The sine wave on no load. I don't know, maybe it's because of this, I don't think so though. I think just no load, the sine wave is a little bit dirty. It's not bad, it's pretty good. But the second you put a load on it, it clears right up. So I'm saying a load around 1000 watts, 500 to 1000 watts, it starts cleaning up real nice. And the bigger the load you put on it, the nicer it gets. So if you're only going to ever be pulling like 100 watts out of it from this, don't get the 8000 obviously, you don't need it anyways. There we go, something turned on, and she cleaned up a little bit, and when something else, if you turn some more stuff on, let's turn on this heater here. Oh, right here. So I got it on. Oh, no, I gotta turn this up. There we go. <coughs> Cleans up a little bit. It still has like this little dip here. It's still a decent sine wave. It's not, this one actually had a tiny bit cleaner sine wave than this one does, but this one's acting a little bit more like my Magna signs. They're, they're pretty good sine wave. They are not the cleanest sine wave. I have to show you a uh, sine wave of that after. It is similar to this. Uh, they don't think they have quite that dip right there, but they their sine wave looks similar. Not a perfect sine wave like you would at the electrical company. And again, the electrical company oftentimes has that flat part at the top, more flat even than this. So, it's not doing bad. So far, I like it. You can definitely live with this type of sine wave. It's not going to damage anything. It's still pretty good. Uh, yeah, we're running through the transformer. Very efficient so far. And so far, we've run a peak at around 3,500 watts. It took it no problem. And uh, we'll see what else the house uh, picks up on it. All right, so we're gonna see what kind of surge we get with my well pump. Oh, there we go. I missed it, dang it. Okay, so the well pump just turned on. That inverter had no problems turning on the surge of the well pump.
Interesting. All right. I'm gonna pass another test, so that's good. I wonder what else I can be running when that uh, well pump surges.